Father in heaven, Lord, we have come to this place this morning from lots of different experiences this week. Some of us are here in spirit, but our body is somewhere else and we are watching this online. Lord, we know that wherever we are, you are there to guide us, to lead us, to comfort us, to heal us, to encourage us. Lord, your concern is for us. Thank you for emptying out heaven in the life of Jesus to give us the assurance that we can spend eternity with you. We would like to lift up, Lord, our Alan Smolarski and Rosemary Soto, two of our dear members, two of, of your dear followers that are currently in the hospital. Lord, we ask that you will give their physicians knowledge and that they will exercise that knowledge in the most appropriate manner for helping them to get well. Lord, we think of all of our members, some of whom haven't been here in a while because of health concerns. And we ask that you will bless them. That, Father, where they are in their living rooms, in front of their computers, tuning in to this morning's service, or simply laying in a bed, staring at the ceiling and saying, God, would you please heal me? Would you please take notice of them, Lord? We want to thank you so much that you have given to us, Kirsten, as a member of our congregation. And Father, you know that she has been preparing for a cosplay competition. Lord, you know all the details about that. You know how excited she is about it. And we ask that your will will be done. She's looking for a yes answer from her mom. And Lord, we pray that, that you will give her the desires of her heart. And thank you for, for caring about these things that are so big in our own personal lives. And Lord, we thank you that we can be here together as a church who loves and cares for each person, that we could be together to worship you and to hear you speak to us from your word. This morning, Lord, as Craig Cleveland opens up the Bible to us, as he shares a vision that you have given to him about plans for his future, Lord, we ask that you will touch us at the right moment, that your spirit will convict us of what we can do to further your kingdom. And Father, you took notice of every hand that was raised this morning. We ask, Lord, that you will take notice of our concerns and that you will bring us peace, a peace that this world cannot understand. This we pray, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Well, before, before Mr. Craig gets up here, just want to say hello to Miss Cindy Evans. I understand that she's uh, tuning in on the line this morning, and so everybody just say hello loud enough for her to know that you are appreciative that she is with us in spirit. So everybody say hello to Miss Cindy. Hello. All right, so Cindy, we, we miss you. We're so glad that you're able to be with us via the internet. And uh, the gentleman to my left just now, or to behind me, or now to my right, 
And now behind me again and to my left is Craig Cleveland. And uh, Craig, you have some exciting stuff you're going to share with us today. I took one of these what they call pastoral prerogative privileges in, in altering the schedule so that you could be with us to share something that God has put onto your heart and we are very excited about what you're going to share for us. Your, your infamy, if that's even the word, comes from the fact that you have been at Fountain View Academy for millennia now. Is that right? Twenty <laughs> some odd years that's you have right. been there. That's right. And God has called you to do something different. And you're going to share about that with us today. May I pray with you? Please. Lord, you know my friend Craig. You know the vision that you have given to him for his future. And we ask that as he shares with us that our hearts will be warmed, that we will be drawn closer to Jesus. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, it's really a pleasure to be here this morning and share with you folk. And uh, I want to thank Scott for inviting us. Scott's been a real blessing in our years up in Canada and sharing several powerful weeks of prayer. And you know, when we open God's word, we're blessed. It just happens every time. But Scott has been the person that God has used many times. So thank you for extending that friendship even now to inviting us here. And I'm really happy to have my son James with me here and um, another young person who trained with me up there in Canada, Scarlett Wells. And I believe we'll even hear from a local Floridian who also trained at Fountain View a little later on. So uh, we'll keep that as a surprise. But I want to tell you that in our modern world, sometimes we wonder, how can God speak to us? You know, we read the story of Nehemiah and they got to the end, and they ran into a problem. They couldn't decide who was really Jewish and who really could go on the record of those who'd returned and built the wall. And so they said, well, we'll wait. We'll wait until the temple's set up, and there's an Urim and Thummim, right, that the priest would wear, you know, those lights that would light up. We don't have that today, do we? I mean, we can't say, well, leave that one for... But God still speaks, doesn't he? Yeah. And he speaks through committees. He speaks through church leadership. And we've seen that. And I want to share my own testimony this morning of how God has been speaking to me and my wife. And it started about a year ago. I'll just, there's our family on, on the wall there. And um, we have three boys and a girl. James is our eldest. And about a year ago, we were lying in bed like good couples do talking every night. And, and there were just like, God, what are you trying to tell us? What are you trying to tell us? And so finally, one night I said, honey, I think God's telling us that we need to move. And she said, I really don't like that idea. I said, I don't like it either. So a few nights later, I said, well, what should we do about it? And she said, I don't know. Yeah, because we do need to find out. If that's what he's telling us, we really need to know. And so I said, well, you know, I've been up here for all these years, and I haven't had a call for 18 years. So what if, you know, I think it would be safe to tell God, if you want us to move, then give us a call to move, because we haven't had that for 18 years. Everybody knows I'm Mr. Music at Fountain View. And, and so that, that's safe. Then we'll know. And we can be done with this. So um, two days later, phone rang. Hi, I just walked out of a committee. I'm with the Voice of Prophecy. We've just moved new world headquarters just north of Denver. A new team, a new leader. Sean Boonstra is waiting for your call. Will you be our PR man? And uh, I said, I'm a music teacher. You have the wrong guy. And they said, no, no, no. We know you're the right guy. I said, well, I don't have a degree that you're going to need, so you'd have to send me back to school, and I don't really think that would be God's call for me. No, no, no. We, some of our best team players don't have any degrees in what they do. You are the guy. Please call Sean Boonstra. I said, okay, well, I need to talk to my wife and pray about this. Two days later, I got another call. This one was harder to refuse. We're planning big evangelism through music with young people. Would you come and be our music teacher in one year? We know it'll take time for you to cut loose, so come in one year. Okay, Lord, that was kind of clear. Two days later, the phone rang again. Will you be our principal? Well, again, I said, I'm a music teacher. That's easy. I'm a music teacher. Oh, no, no. You can do all the music you want, but please be our principal. So we felt that God was talking, talking to us. And... Uh, we're shaking our heads, and so we started praying. And you know, we are promised, and, and I have had the privilege, if you've got smartphones, I'll tell you what, one of the best apps you need to have is called Scripture Singer, and it's free. And on that free app, there's hundreds of Scripture songs, and there was a, there's a few quotes from 
books like Steps to Christ and Ministry of Healing on there too. And so I work in the studio every day with the kids that are recording that stuff and putting it up. And we had this song from Ministry of Healing, page 122. And it says that, look, when you read the Bible, it's God's voice speaking to you personally. Personally. Individually, as if you could listen to his voice. And so I said, Lord, you know, we've, we put out a fleece and it just seems like bam, bam, bam. You're telling us you have something for us. And so I'm walking way down by the river early in the morning on a January morning. It was freezing cold. And I had my gloves on and I had my phone out. I'm reading my Bible. And I said, Lord, I'm going to claim that promise that you will speak to us personally. But this is an iPhone and it doesn't know which text to go to. What do you want me to read? Where can I hear your voice? I need you to give our family direction. And you know, I had this impression. Read Luke 5. So I'm Luke 5, I wonder what that's all about. Well, it's the call of Peter, James, John, and Andrew. And Jesus said, leave what you've been doing and come do something else. So I said, Lord, if you're, really, if you're really speaking through your word to me, then do it again. And do you know that God did that for two weeks? For two weeks. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, what are we going to do? And my wife and I are praying and we're asking God to lead. And he continued to give us one sign after another until finally we came and we, we presented this call to the team at Fountain View and we said, you know, we love it here. We've been here for 23 years. It just seems unbelievable that God would call us to leave, but there's so much evidence. Now what do we do? And they said, well, if God's calling you, you have to go, but where are you going? I said, I don't know. That's the hardest thing. I don't know. Now, in the back of my mind, I'll be honest with you, I still had that call from the people that said, well, come and be our music teacher and do all this great music evangelism in one year, and on January 30, we'll give you the call. But you know, God, God just kept telling us, you need to let Fountain View know now. And so we'd let Fountain View know, even when we didn't have that call. And so that was tough, because we could honestly say, we don't know. And um, I... I just want to tell you that God is good. I'm going to pause the story right here, and I'm going to turn to some music from these young people, and we'll hear them sing a song, Broken and Spilled Out. God is calling every one of us to be broken and spilled out. As they come up, I just want to share a, little, a few more photos. Here's my extended family. My sister Marsha and her son Zach actually are right here. Uh, they live in Florida. I have other sisters that live in Dallas, and uh, my brother-in-law from my older sister pastors up in Indiana. And um, I'll just leave it right here. In our family, it's all about music. Dad plays violin, and somehow, without any bias at all, <laughs> there we are. Broken and spilled out. A plain village woman Driven by love for her Lord Recklessly poured out a valuable essence Disregarding the scorn And once it was broken And spilled out A fragrance filled all the room Like a prisoner released from his shackles like a resound set free from the tomb broken and spilled out just in love of you Jesus my most precious Lavish 
precious treasure his loved and his own perfect son sent here to show me the love of the father just just for love it was done and though you were perfect and holy you gave up yourself willingly you spare no expense for my pardon you are used up and wasted for me broken and spilled out just the love of me jesus god's most precious treasure lavished on me broken and spilled out and poured out my feet in sweet abandon Lord you were spilled out and you stopped for thee used up for thee. Well, so we resign, and we, we said we don't know where, but we believe God's calling, and we had time to wait and pray, and do a lot of praying. And two days later, the phone rang. And um, it was Steve Dickman. And he said, um, Craig, how soon can you and your wife come to Tennessee? I have a property you need to see. And let me back up a little bit. This is Steve Dickman, by the way. He's the ASI president. If you're familiar with ASI, ASI is Adventist Layman Services and Industries. So it's an organization of Christian businessmen who fund and support ministries. And so he said, you know, as I've traveled, I keep bumping into your vision for music evangelism that's huge. And I love it. And he said, you've shared it with me and you've shared it with lots of people. You know, reach America through patriotic music. Get the book, The Great Controversy, in their hands. Let them see through the Bible what the future holds for America and how you and I can be on the winning side. And he said, that's a beautiful vision and it needs to happen. And people are telling me as I travel, Craig needs his own school. But he says, I haven't told you this because I didn't have an idea until now. And he says, I have an idea. You should come. And so that's what I want to share with you a little bit. Of course, what God has done through what we've done in the years in Canada is, is to put us where we've been able to use the orchestra and music to share the gospel in a beautiful way. We were, here we are in Europe uh, filming the Great Controversy production uh, that follows the history of Europe. This is in Rome again. Uh, we're, we're there. Also, we've done a lot of work where we've worked with public evangelism. This was the crusade that the It Is Written team did in Las Vegas. Here we are in Portugal, and our goal, of course, reach the world. So now our dream, a school on the East Coast that can do this also. And so our dream is to, to work there with music, to have an active YouTube channel, and to do concerts that are connected with health work and prophecy seminars. And how will we get it started? I'm inviting young people that have worked with me before, like Scarlett and James, and there are several others who have already agreed to join us so that as we start the new school, there, you know, there may be only 15 or 20 students in the very first year, but those 15 or 20 can work with a dozen or 15 or 20 who are seasoned and experienced. And I believe that the Lord will use that so that we can produce 
three DVD productions for witnessing in the first year. And that's our goal. So we flew to Tennessee, and we met Steve, and we prayed together, and we went in to see this property. And I want to be, I'll just be clear with you, because we're at the stage where we are, I don't, I don't want to give any specifics of what it is, but the Lord has this property there. It's been on the market for sale, and it has beautiful buildings, as you'll see. It's on the Hiawassee River, and, you know, I love to swim. I love water and water sports. It's been a big part of Fountain View Academy and um, our work with the young people. So you can see the highlighted area there of the property, 225 acres. The beautiful thing is that it's eight miles down a paved county road from the nearest town. The town has a population of 495. And in that eight-mile stretch along the river, there's only two other houses. So when you get there, it's quiet. It's alone. You're deep in the Tennessee woods. And yet, you're only an hour and a half from Knoxville and an hour from Chattanooga. You're only eight hours from right here. Eight hours from Chicago. Eight hours from Washington, D.C. And for this boy who's lived in Canada for 23 years where it's 50 hours, to, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Uh, here's, here's a close-up. Uh, the, the thing is, it's, I, I, it's hard for me to point out, but there are beautiful staff homes, their dormitories, girls dorm, boys dorm, a beautiful school building, and I'll show you closer up pictures of them. Here's a few details, 20 staff housing units, the dorms, the cafeteria, and so on. Here are some of the buildings. Here's one of the newest buildings. Uh, this was a $1.4 million building, and it's a beautiful cafeteria downstairs, apartments for staff, and girls' residence upstairs. Uh, this is a $2 million building that um, is really exciting to me because as I toured this campus, you know, I'm walking through. This, this building not only has classrooms, Southern University set up a beautiful science lab there, it, beautiful windows, a view out over across the fields to the river, uh, but as I'm touring this building, I was getting so excited because there's 13 offices, 13 offices, and they're in three banks, and I'm thinking, this is the audio studio department. This is the video studio department, and this is the music writing area. It's in the back corner where it's quiet. All these little offices, just perfect. I believe the Lord has seen this plan before. Uh, every great school needs a farm. At Fountain View Academy, for all the years in Canada, the farm is core, a real core part. Yes, music is huge, but you want the combination. You know, you don't want kids that are just all about singing and doing the stage work. You want them to get their hands dirty and have the opportunity to learn those skills that are so important. Here's a shot of the boys' dorm in springtime. Here's a view from the boys' dorm on the lower level as you look out. Here's the view of all the campus out across those fields to the river. And the, the trees are right along the river. And like Pastor Scott said, today is a day to partner together, not just for me to share, but I uh, believe this God, God has called us. I've shared my story very briefly because our time is so short, but I want you to know that the property is worth $3.9 million and lots of people are looking at it to buy it. The replacement cost is at least $7 million. When you look at the buildings, there's beautiful staff homes, beautiful staff homes, beautiful dormitories. It's available to Advent Herald only for the cost of the current debt. And that's $1.3 million, plus a startup fee for our five-year business plan of $300,000. And um, the mission, our dream is to see young people, young people trained to go out and give the gospel story so that Jesus can come back. We'll share another number now. Write them on my heart. This is the dream as we do evangelism, as we sing concerts. It's that God's law, God's love will be written in the hearts of millions, thousands, hundreds that have never heard before. You've written what you want for me in stone a reflection of your character alone so I tried to keep your laws without regret 
But I'm easily distracted and forget So write them on my heart Seal them in my mind The beauty of your law and grace combined Remind me just how lovely your commandments are Write them on the tablets of my heart. There is only one desire inside of me. It's to be everything you've created me to be. And I know the only way that I can grow Is for you to come inside and take control So write them on my heart Seal them in my mind The beauty of your law and grace combined Remind me just lovely your commandments are and write them on the tablets of my heart <clears throat> you written what you want for me in stone a reflection of your character alone so i tried to keep your laws without regret but i'm easily distracted and forget so write them on my heart seal them in my mind the beauty of your law and grace combined Remind me just how lovely your commandments are And write them on the tablets of my heart Your law reflects your goodness The cross reveals your grace That's the motivation Behind your perfect ways So write them on my heart Seal them in my mind The beauty of your law and grace combined Remind me just how lovely Your commandments are and write them on the tablets of my heart. I want to go right into two more numbers. We'll go to He Touched Me, and then we'll follow that with Little Is Much. And I want to just, as, as we're moving into He Touched Me, uh, it's just so exciting to work with these young people. I tell you, it's, it's exciting to see how God moves through music. I could tell you so many stories I would never be able to stop. But we'll just go right into that music. But as they're singing, I'm going to go ahead and show you some pictures. James and I have just spent all of this week film scouting for our first production, which will feature the book America in Prophecy, which is the great controversy. And it'll be patriotic music with that book and brief introductions of, of the topics by the young people. One, one thing I'll put on the screen is words from, from, um, from um, boy, is it the Jeff, Thomas Jefferson? I'm sorry, I just drew blank on that. Anyway, the, yes, the Jefferson Monument, uh, you, if you read the middle section of that, it's incredible about religious freedom. And these are things that America needs to remember, is that freedom 
cannot be forced. It has to be a choice. And that's, that's the message. We also have plans to be in less than a year to be in the Holy Lands filming a production. Uh, we believe with Pastor John Bradshaw again featuring the book Desire of Ages and Walking the Steps of Christ. So as Daniel and James sing, it's so great to have Daniel join us. This is an old favorite of all the young men at Fountain View. And then little as much as they sing those two numbers, or as they sing and then James sings, I'll go ahead and share with you some of the photos of the sites that the Lord's opened up. And I'll just tell you one of the most exciting is to be filming from a beautiful schooner in the New York Harbor with the Statue of Liberty in the background. And that's, that's a miracle story too, that if you want to see me afterward, I can share with you. But God has opened up doors this week and we're excited. So now, he touched me. Harvest fields now ripening, there is a work for all to do. Hark, the Master's voice is calling to the harvest, he's calling you. Now does the place you're called to labor seem so small and little known? 
it is great if God is in it, for he will not forsake his own. Cause a little is much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There is a crown and you can win it. If you go in Jesus' name, now when the conflict here has ended and our race on earth is won, he will say, if you've been faithful, child well done cause a little is much when God is in it labor not for wealth or fame there is a crown and you can win it if you go if you go if you go